Well, a new book is ready to pull the curtain back on the relationship between Queen, Queen Elizabeth II and her sister Margaret, born four years apart but raised together. The sisters grew up wearing the same clothes, had the same tutors, and weather royal life together, but their personality differences were evident from the start. With more on this, I am joined by Andrew Morton. He's the author of Elizabeth and Margaret, The Intimate World of the Windsor Sisters, and he joins me this morning from California. Andrew, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Nice to see you too. So, so much has already been written about the Queen and her sister. What is there to be revealed about this relationship that we didn't already know? Well, actually, quite a lot, because people have not really put them together. They've they've described certain incidents in their lives, but never the whole life. And I think it's it's fascinating that we've we've had lots of uh, queens in Britain's history, but very very few queens with s- sisters that they were close to. And this, in, in actual fact, this is a unique relationship. Um, Margaret was as close to the Queen as 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 anybody ever has been, and. This relationship is really the the uh, fundamental one in the reign. And the relationship certainly had its ups and downs, but contrary to popular belief, you write that it was Margaret, not Elizabeth, who shut down the marriage to Peter pa- Townsend. Did Margaret choose duty over love? Well, th- that was a romantic uh, uh, context that um, uh, Margaret was working in, that, sh- that she she chose to abide by the strictures of the Church of England. But I I discovered in the research that, uh, in actual fact, the Queen was prepared to accept some criticism of the monarchy by allowing uh, Margaret to find happiness with Group Captain Peter Townsend, this war hero who was divorced. And um, uh, she chose, uh, Margaret chose not to. She she chose uh, to remain single. So the the great romance of the century rather rather fizzled out. And f- for me, the interesting thing is the woman who was in control. It was Margaret who was in control. It was Peter Townsend who didn't have, really have a clue what was going on. It's the obverse of the Wallace Simpson, Edward VIII drama. You write, and this is so fascinating, that every generation um, is stalked by a shadow, uh, a narrative of the good versus the naughty royal, the rebellious extrovert versus the sensible introvert. I read that, and my first thought was William and Harry. Well, this, William and Harry were part of the inspiration for writing this book because they, their closeness, uh, well, at the time, uh, was was one of the thoughts that, yes, there's so many uh, royals that are double acts. And obviously, William and Harry are the contemporary double acts. But the the original double acts, as it were, were Elizabeth and Margaret. And you also write that Margaret was often the Queen's alter ego, that Margaret was able to say things that the Queen only probably wished that she could. I have to ask her, Andrew, what do you think Margaret and Her Majesty would have to say about the Oprah interview with Prince Harry and Meghan? Well, I mean, Margaret was very critical of Diana when she gave that panorama interview where she said that Prince Charles wasn't fit to be king and where she wanted to be to be the Queen of Hearts. So Margaret would have been uh, horrified at, at uh, the way that uh, Harry threw William and his father under the bus, saying that they were both trapped. And his his criticism of the institution of the monarchy, although he didn't directly criticise the Queen. But, I mean, for me, it was, the, it, it was the, the, the biggest assault on the monarchy by a, a prince of the realm that I can think of. And, and the Queen, what do you think that she would say to Margaret behind closed doors, behind palace doors, if she could? Well, as my mother would say, she, she'd give them both a thick ear. <laughs> um, Andrew, so many people that weren't interested in the royal family are now interested because of the series The Crown. Do you think that it takes too many liberties? I know that you have studied and followed the royal family for years now. No, quite frankly, I think Peter Morgan's genius is that he's made these people come alive. I mean, he's, in a way, he's probably made them more interesting than they actually actually are. <laughs> and he's introduced a, a new generation, as you say, to the secondary characters like Margaret and like Princess Anne um, and made them vivid human beings. And, and Margaret, throughout the crown, uh, emerges as a, as a really controversial and colourful character. 
Andrew Morton. He is the author of Elizabeth and Margaret, The Intimate World of the Windsor Sisters. All the best to you. Good luck with the book. Thank you very much.